Now we're in the beginning stages of getting a lot of new laptops here into the studio in anticipation of the holiday season. So they're gonna be coming in fast and furious. First up is from Lenovo. I just took delivery of the ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 3, new for 2020. And it's got a new 10th generation Intel processor. It's also got a bumped up GPU. It's the NVIDIA GTX 1650 Ti with Max-Q. It also has a beautiful 4K OLED display. We'll get into that and more coming up right now. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 3. Coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell. This way you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video. Make sure you follow me on my social media, especially Twitter and Instagram. It's on those platforms I post a lot of the updates. And don't forget to check out my Discord server. It's a great place for us to hang out and talk tech. Link will be in the description below. And today's video is brought to you by all the members who contributed this month to the channel. Want to become a member? Hit that join button below. And in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo. I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is seeing this video before its release. This review unit was provided by Lenovo, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Okay, here's what's new. 10th generation Intel Core i7 8 series processors, Nvidia GeForce GTX 1650 Ti with Max-Q GPU. Now pricing for the X1 Extreme Gen 3 starts at 161340. That's on sale right now over at lenovo.com. It goes up from there depending on the SKU you choose. Now I have a more high-end SKU that will come in for a lot more money, but it is priced competitively with the likes of the Dell XPS 15 and the Apple MacBook Pro 16. Now you can get it up to a Core i9 processor with the eight cores, of course. That right now seems to be unavailable or temporarily unavailable according to Lenovo's site, but check the link below. I'll have the latest pricing and availability. Again, it'll be in that link below. Now the unit Lenovo sent me has the Core i7-10850H, a six core processor with vPro. And with specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. You get your 135 watt power supply that uses Lenovo's own proprietary connection. You also get the extension cord along with some safety and warranty information. Now, of course, you get the unit itself holding it for the first time. You gotta love that premium feel of that carbon fiber along with its slim light design. I actually like that premium look. Now the starting weight for the non-touch model is 1.7 kilograms or 3.75 pounds. Now I have the touch model and that comes in at 1.81 kilograms or four pounds, making it light enough to carry with you on the go. Definitely portable. And you gotta love that carbon fiber exterior with that magnesium alloy chassis. It's definitely durable, made to take a licking and keep on ticking. But one thing of note, it will still be a major fingerprint magnet. You will be wiping it down quite a bit. You now get the X1 logo branding on the lid. Now that also lights up as it has always done, but this is the updated logo they've been going with in 2020. Now to put its size into perspective, here it is next to the 2019 MacBook Pro 16. As you can see, very similar in terms of the footprint. And here it is next to its chief competitor, the Dell XPS 15 9500. And as you can see, the XPS 15 definitely has a smaller footprint. And don't worry, I will be doing a head-to-head -head between these two competitors, so stay tuned for that. Okay, as we always do, let's check out the port selection. We'll start off on the left side where you get your power port, two Thunderbolt 3 ports that do data charge and display out. That means they're full service. You get an HDMI port for display out and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Moving over to the right side is a full-size SD card reader, which I love to see, two USB-A ports, and finally a Kensington lock port to round out all the ports. Notably missing is an Ethernet RJ45 port. And once again, Lenovo makes it very easy to access the inside of this laptop. All you need to do is loosen the captive Phillips head screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in.
Now, once inside, you'll notice the dual fans for cooling. We'll talk about fan noise and thermals in the full review, as we will the 80 watt hour battery that you see here. We'll test the battery life and, of course, charging times. That's all coming up. Now, the good news is the RAM is slotted in. There are two RAM slots. My unit has 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and there are two SSD slots for you to expand out the storage. So that gives you a lot of possibilities when it comes to upgradability. The Wi-Fi card is soldered into the motherboard, so you won't be able to upgrade that. But the good news is it's Wi-Fi 6, making it more future-proof, and it's also a Bluetooth 5.1 combo. And so far, they're both working well. And one of my favorite parts of this laptop will be its display. What we're looking at is a 15.6 inch OLED display with a resolution of 3840 by 2160. That means you're gonna have a 16 to nine aspect ratio which of course is excellent for consuming media, especially with an HDR display like we have here. Great for watching YouTube, Netflix, Amazon, and the like. It definitely is superb. Now, I know a lot of you are in the market for its competitor, the Dell XPS 15. Now that has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, which will make it a little bit taller, but consuming media on that means you'll have black bars on the top and the bottom. So there's a little bit of a disadvantage, but the advantage of a 16 to 10 when it comes to productivity and when it comes to working on it, like Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, is that you get a taller display, so there's more to see on the display. So it's less scrolling, and that may be an advantage when it comes to productivity. Again, I'm going to do a head-to-head -head between these two. Now, another 16 to 10 laptop that you may, of course, want to look at in comparison to the X1 Extreme Gen 3 is, of course, the Apple MacBook Pro 16, and that, of course, has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio as well. You're looking at a very bright display, more than 400 nits. I actually measured 412, but I'll bring you all the metrics in the full review. But rest assured, you get the really deep blacks, the excellent contrast, the really vibrant colors that are hallmarks of an OLED display. This certainly doesn't disappoint. And it also doesn't disappoint when it comes to the coverage of the color gamut. You're looking at 100% sRGB. Again, this is a good choice for those content creators that do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. It's an excellent display to do color grading on. And you got to love the touch display. It's a multi-touch display, very responsive, another great way to navigate through the OS. So this is the front-facing camera on the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 3 here for 2020. It's a 720p, 30 frames per second webcam. It's an infrared webcam. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. Good for Skype, good for Zoom, I want to know. Now, I like the fact that this unit has the Think Shutter switch, allowing you to turn off your webcam, giving you more security and privacy. And there's a fingerprint scanner located on the right side of the keyboard, as you see here. Great for Windows Hello login, great added layer of security. Now, there are bottom-facing speakers on the X1 Extreme Gen 3. Let's give them a listen and compare it to the MacBook Pro 16, as well as the Dell XPS 15. Let's give it a listen. Now, as you know, I absolutely love ThinkPad keyboards, and I'm happy to report this one is great. Once again, legendary keyboard here, great tactile feedback, good key travel, very comfortable to type on for extended periods of time, especially for those users that need to get productivity work done. This will definitely do it. It also has a multi-stage backlight, which of course allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. It worked really well. 
And I also like the fact that you get physical keys for communication. So when you're doing Skype, when you're doing Zoom, you now have those physical keys to turn it on and off. And that is great, especially during this pandemic when we're working from home. And it's also a spill resistant keyboard. That's great for a clumsy klutz like me. Now, it also has a precision touchpad that's very responsive, two-finger scrolling, buttery smooth. All the gestures work well. It's a glass touchpad. It's very premium, and they did a great job with it. It also has the track point. Now, not everybody loves the track point. I acknowledge that, but I happen to be a big fan of the track point. Another great way to navigate through the OS. I thought it was very responsive as well. Okay, 24 hours in, what do I think about the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 3? I love it. So far, so good. Superb 4K OLED display, bright, vibrant, everything we want from an OLED panel. It's all there. Excellent build, great durability, thanks to that military standard 810G rating. Expect strong performance out of that move to the 10th generation H processors. Uh, looking good so far. I'll bring you all the numbers in that full review. Thin, light design with that magnesium alloy chassis with that carbon fiber exterior it's all looking good outstanding keyboard touchpad and of course track point all working well great port selection although they are missing the rj45 this time around and i like the user upgradability ram and ssd are all user upgradable improved audio this time around i'm happy to see that but it is still a major fingerprint magnet i haven't seen any deal breakers so far ladies and gentlemen but of course i need to put it through its paces to bring you my full review coming very soon but so far i think lenovo's got a winner on their hands So what do you think about this bad boy, the X1 Extreme Gen 3, thin, light, beautiful carbon fiber exterior. You've got the magnesium alloy chassis, very strong and durable with that military standard A10G rating. Uh, it could take a licking, keep on ticking, you know how that goes. So everything we want, spill resistant keyboard, beautiful keyboard in terms of the legendary ThinkPad keyboard. I absolutely love the keyboard on this. Love the touchpad and the track point all working well. Now, as far as user upgradability, two slots for RAM, two slots for SSD. Both are accessible very easily. I like that Lenovo makes it easy for the user to get inside this laptop to make the necessary upgrades. One difference from last year is that the Wi-Fi card is no longer slotted in. It's now soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade that. Not a huge deal since it is a Wi-Fi 6 card, making it pretty much future-proof, at least for now. Now, it's also got Bluetooth 5.1. It's all working well. Now, it's got an 80-watt-hour battery that I look forward to putting through its paces. Now, keep in mind, it is an OLED display. It is a 4K display a lot of pixels to push. Of course, I'm not expecting great battery life. There's a full HD option on this one. There's also a 4K option you can go with as far as an IPS panel that will give you better battery life. But what we're looking at here is something great for the content creator. Coverage, coverage of the color gamut is really great on this. I'll bring you all the numbers. I've tested it already, but I want to save it for the full review. It's also got a really bright display coming in over the advertised 400 nits. I love to see when manufacturers or under claim what the actual brightness is. Here, they actually exceeded their 400 nit claim. So that's always been pretty good. We got a 10th generation Core i7 in this one, V Pro. Uh, again, that's an upgrade over last year's ninth generation processors. There is a Core i9 available, although the website's showing temporarily unavailable. I expect that to change very soon. So you can get it with that eight core, Core i9, 10th gen for this year. So that will be something that you might be interested in. Now, this will go up against something like the Dell XPS 15, the Apple MacBook Pro 16. To the, some extent, you're also looking at the HP Envy 15 for a price of value. But I think what we're looking at is a good direct comparison between this and the Dell XPS 15. I will be doing a head to head on that. I'll compare it with the Apple MacBook Pro 16 as well. Got a lot of testing to do, so let's get to it. That full review will be coming very soon. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.